हाय वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून सभी को नमस्कार ए वॉम वेलकम टू नमस्कार सर ए वॉम वेलकम टू ट्वेंटी वर्ल्ड एजुकेशन समिट ऑन द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन ऑन ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर एंड वी आर विद अंदर ए वंडरफुल पैनल डिस्कशन एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ द सेशन इज द नीड फॉर यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड कॉलेजेस इन इंडिया टू मेक स्टूडेंट इंडस्ट्री रेडी एंड फोकस ऑन फ्यूचर स्किल्स both topics are most relevant right now regarding the job regarding the skills regarding the future prospects so to discuss and deliberate on this particular topic i would like to invite the speaker of session first of all i would like to welcome dr jamshed baruch founding vice chancellor sai university welcome dr jamshed sir thank you for giving your precious thank time you. to us I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Vikas Singh, Vice Chancellor, ITM University from Raipur. Welcome, Vikas sir. It's always a pleasure so to have you inside in this World Education Summit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would like to welcome Professor Raghubir Singh, Vice Chancellor, Tirantakal Mahavir University from Moradabad. Namaskar, Raghubir sir. Thank you. 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 No issue, sir. If you can, sir, log in and log out, log out and log in again with the Good camera time. on, so that is okay. Okay, sir. And I would like to welcome Professor Sanli Gupta, Vice Chancellor, Des Bhakti University, from Punjab. Welcome, Sanli, ma'am. Thank you for giving your precious time Thank to us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And our one more speaker is joining us, Dr. Nitin Malik, Registrar, Dr. B R Ambedkar University, from Delhi. So Nitin Malik will join soon us. till then we will start this session with all our esteemed speakers from the pan india so as all you know regarding this topic that we are talking about the industry that is future students and the future skills so i want to take the opening remarks with the starting from the dr vikas ji that what their views and how we are seeking the future how we can make the students industry ready so i request all the speakers give their opening remarks in next one three to four minutes so we can start the further discussion on so vikas sir your opening remarks regarding the topics how you see the future regarding the industry ready and the skills thank you so much abhishek ji and thanks to ikbal also for inviting me to this 20th world education summit Uh, it's always a pleasure to join you know elect summits and i'm really you know looking forward to having a physical summit now like we had two years back and you know coming to meet all these stalwarts you know speakers in the physical you know world but nevertheless uh, even this you know, platform it's so beneficial and i'm very happy that you invited me and the, the topic for discussion is so interesting you know uh, i would say that industry ready is the kind of the need of the hour and why i'm saying need of the hour because the way we are talking about you know uh, taking india to the next platform making it a 5 trillion dollar economy making you know uh, a better country better world for everyone it's very essential that the students those who are you know, uh, getting technical education or professional education they become industry ready they become employable they start contributing you know towards the growth of their their own growth their families growth growth of society growth of the country as a whole it's very essential and you know there are certain things which institutions universities are required to take i'll be sharing you know what we are doing at it university here at raipur to to ensure that our students you know are industry ready i'll be sharing you know uh, in 3 4 minutes as the time is stipulated to me uh, you know in higher education we say that if a student is uh, having this professional degree he should be having good improvement in his knowledge his skills his behavior and attitude so these four you know we need to work on we need to improve the 
knowledge. We need to improve the skill set. The skill set means, I would say, once he is knowledgeable, is he able or is she able to apply that knowledge into some handsome kind of thing? So, improvement of skills, then comes having the right kind of behavior so that when they are in industry, they are meeting with other people, they are working in a team, they are working with other groups, making presentations to different other bodies. So, are they uh, skilled for that or trained for that? Then comes the attitude, how good they are in their attitude, positive looking, uh, excited for the future, excited for the growth of the company where they are working. And then, of course, you know, the, the set of future skills which are required. So what we are doing at our university is we are, we are trying to have a concept of ICP here, which is individual career plan. And what we do in individual career plan, you know, Abhishek, uh, in the first year when the student joins the second semester, like in the first semester, they are more getting acquainted with the university and the practices and the because they are coming from the 12th standard. So from school, they are migrating to college, higher education life. So first semester, we leave it more for getting acquainted with the processes and systems. But in the second semester beginning, we, we, we discuss with each student individually in every uh, program, the department of uh, the program, as well as the training and placement team member, they jointly sit. It's a kind, kind of day long activity. And every student is, you know, is, is uh, you know uh, a discussion takes place. And what we try to find out is looking at our own expertise of faculty members, our own teaching resources availability, looking at our labs and other things, we create a list of job roles for every program. These can be say seven job roles, eight job roles, ten job roles, which are where we we feel that we are very strong at. Now, the student is asked to pick, you know, out of those job roles. Uh, minimum one and maximum two job roles for which he is more interested. You know, what we believe that to become, you know, successful in life, you need to have good domain knowledge. You will be successful if you have strong domain knowledge. And But to become happy in life, it is also essential that you love what you do. So liking what you are you know, doing or the job role of your interest is very important. So like, let's say you are doing MBA in marketing. We would discuss with you whether you would be interested in retail kind of jobs or, you know, e-commerce kind of job. You are doing finance. So we'll be, you know, talking to student. You're going for known lending financial company or lending financial company or insurance sector. You know, what kind of job role you are looking at? And depending on that, then the individual career plan is prepared. And what it means for that particular job role, we identify you know, various other courses which are required. So during, say, it's a three-year program or four-year program or five-year program for every semester, starting from second semester to the penalty mate semester, every semester one additional course is done. That course can be through MOOCs platform, NPTEL, Coursera, EDX, any platform for that matter. That course will be done plus all the internships, all the activities, expert talks will be in that direction. So by the time, which is the last year of the program, he has the skill set, he has the attitude, behavior, and the knowledge for a specific job role. And this makes, I believe, the students very industry ready. So this is what we are doing at ITM University Raipur. And I'm here eagerly looking forward to hear the expertise and best practices of other vice chancellors and professors. Thank you once Thank again. You. Thank you, Dr. Vikas Ji, for this wonderful opening remarks regarding the domain knowledge and the happy health plans. We will discuss further. So I would like to request everyone to please put your mic off when they are not speaking so that background noise will be reduced. And I would like to invite Professor Raghubir Singh for the opening remarks for the maximum three to four minutes regarding this topic and what their thoughts on so that we can conclude with the start with the discussion further. Raghubi, sir, Thank over you. to you. Sir. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, having listened to Professor Vikas, I think there's not much to say on that aspect, what we do as far as universities is concerned. Spoken quite a lot on what is expected from students. Uh, 
See, I, as far as this word is concerned, industry readiness, we've been probably hearing it for the last one and a half decade. And uh, I have always been opposing this word right from the beginning there, you know. Uh, my simple reason is intentions are good, creating, you know, industry ready students. But this term I find highly subjective and to misinterpretation. What do you mean by job readiness? Can industry tell us, industry ready student, what is the expectations from them? Is our role to actually prepare students for industry? Is it our role? Now, if it is not our role, then what is our role? We've got to look at even that also. Broadly, we understand, you know, as our uh, colleague, Professor Vikas Singh, has already spoken in many terms, what we are supposed to do with our students, we all know that. Now, when it comes to industry readiness or a job readiness for industry, what I actually, over a period of time, have, you know, culled out, of, out this word from what they actually keep talking about is, is basically training students on those techniques and tools which are very specific to them. See, my issue is out there. Can we train our students to those very specific tools and techniques which the industry use? And if so, then what is the longevity of those tools and techniques? A research says that by the time a graduate engineer passes out, Whatever he has learned during that time, it probably changes quite a lot. Almost 80% of that changes by the time he passes out and after a few years, he might not find those tools and techniques relevant. So the question is what we should do. In my mind, okay, all of us could have a different take. In my mind is to in fact develop that cognition of students. That means develop higher order thinking. Develop that critical thinking in them so that they are able to adapt, able to learn independently, subsequent in their career. So let's prepare them for that particular career, prepare them for lifelong learning, make them to learn independently, make them to learn collaboratively, let them develop those skills of higher order thinking, that is your ability to analyze, evaluate and create something rather than giving them a specific tool and a technique which probably may not last for long. <clears throat> that is one aspect of uh, uh, you know, job readiness. Another one is, should we structure our curriculum to their requirements? Since this word job readiness it's, uh, itself is not well defined, Whereas our curriculum is so structured, well-defined, it will be very difficult to bring in what exactly they want. Third thing is, can industry guarantee us that if so-and-so skill is available, we would recruit so many people from yours and so many students from No industry would ever guarantee you. No then why should I? So I as an you know, academic leader would like to stick to what my job is or what I can do. Yes, uh, a procedural knowledge is needed to be ingrained on students, but that's a, again a fundamental thing. Whatever, you know, a requirement that the industry are, if he understands the procedural aspect of knowledge, he can apply it anywhere, anytime. Now, the second aspect of your uh, topic is what are the future skills, which probably, I don't know whether you like to like me to touch it here or you like me to uh, come around for the second time. I have no idea. Second round. Second round. Second round. Second round. Okay. Fair enough. That's what I, what I have to say about job readiness. Thank you. Thanks, Ravi, sir. So, regarding the overall expect regarding the readiness and the skills we will move on to further first we will take the opening remarks so <coughs> i would like to invite for the opening remarks dr jamsteed baruch founding vice chancellor sai university jamsteed sir your remarks regarding the topic and what your views regarding the future aspects and regarding the innovation in the higher education over to you jamsteed sir Thank you, sir. And uh, it's a pleasure to be on a panel with uh, all uh, my distinguished colleagues. Uh, I 
find myself in agreement with Professor Singh that the number one priority is critical thinking broadly defined. Now, critical thinking means different things to me, uh, different people. I approach the whole set of questions. In fact, I approach the whole question of how to design education from the point of view of cognitive neuroscience, which is my research field. There is now an emerging body of research on how the brain learns. Much of the way in which we've designed universities traditionally does not match with how the brain learns optimally. And as we get more research, we need to reform our institutions, our curricula, and our pedagogy in accord with that. So with respect to the current question of this panel, I think the number one priority is critical thinking defined broadly, and critical thinking breaks down into a number of things. The ability to analyze was already mentioned. Uh, the ability to question your own assumption is also an important part of that. Most people go through life as they get older, they become more and more certain that they figured out life. But in fact, the opposite should be the case. As we go through life and we keep learning more and more and more, we need to put up a mirror to ourselves and constantly question our preconceptions. Another aspect of critical thinking is learning how to distinguish between signal and noise in information. We are all bombarded with information online, whether we like it or not, advertising, politicians are screaming and shouting at us. We get all of these memes and this and that on our social media and it is starting to be horrifying that even people who are have college degrees find themselves believing a lot of that uncritically. Graduating from a, a, um, with an undergraduate degree, bachelor's degree, in my view, regardless of what field you're in, should also include a well-trained discipline and habit to approach new information skeptically, to learn how to ask questions about the credibility of the source, to analyze its, its, its viability, and to look for more credible sources. So there are quite a few pieces to critical thinking. One last piece, by the way, is called active learning. And you know, that's a whole topic uh, unto itself. One thing we know overwhelmingly from cognitive neuroscience is learning is much more powerful and much more enduring if it comes from, if, if, a, if a student speaks, creates, uh, right, works on a project, collaborates, in other words, is actively engaged in the learning process. And the teacher or professor or the books, or the internet, serve as feedback me mechanisms, stimulation, and then feeding back on them to, to refine and guide and correct uh, and, and, and encourage. After critical thinking, I would say the second most important thing is communication. And that is a massive priority, particularly in India, because we are blessed with a very diverse nation with a diversity of languages. And we find ourselves in a situation where English is the language of the professions and English is uh, the medium of instruction in universities. And many Indian students, of course, uh, may not be as proficient as others. It's our job to lift all students, regardless of their language proficiency, to a level where they can benefit from the full value of the 
content in any given subject. Communication includes confidence in giving presentations. Uh, just, 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 can you just hold on a second? I'm on a webinar, sir. Yeah, I'm on a. Can you what time you want? At till four forty-five. Four forty-five. I have webinar. I'm sorry. I'm I'm on the I'm on the screen. I I emailed you. Sorry. No. I'm on the screen. Okay. I'm sorry. I I. No sure. No sure. Yes, sir. Carry on, Dr. Samsi, sir. That's so no issue, sir. We will come up with the Samsi, sir, in the second round. No issue, sir. Your, your uh, chancellor walks into your office and you have to. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so happened, sir. I will just end by saying written communication is also important because writing is a craft. 100%. And, sir. And, and we need to learn that. And then finally, students have to have enough breadth in their knowledge because you might learn techniques like machine learning and coding but in the end you have to apply them to different uh, arenas so i'll stop there thanks thanks Jamsi, sir. so you have majorly highlighted two points critical thinking and the communications and we will discuss further how we can proceed so further moving on i would like to invite professor sani gupta vice chancellor this work the university from punjab to share her opening remarks regarding the topics what she thinks can it be delivered in the future terms or it will come only in the papers? Sally, ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, Abhishek. It's my pleasure to be here amongst all of you. And uh, I'm really thankful to uh, you for giving me this platform. In fact, uh, since when we talk about industry or technia interface, uh, there is too much of noise in between. I request the mic to be off of other participants. So, uh, Raghubi, sir, can you put off your mic? So, on everyone. Okay. Now, ma'am, go, go on. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, when we talk about our industry readiness, that the students, they should be employable, students should be having future skills, then... Uh, I feel that it is we as higher education institutions that we have to reinvent the education system, keeping in view the needs of the industry. We have to keep, keep pace with the industry for its ever-changing needs. These needs could be uh, sometimes uh, IT needs, sometimes we call it future skills, maybe going for the scaling or upskilling. So we have to go beyond uh, the digital skill as of today and we have to think about a lot many future skills. Uh, everybody wants that the person should be employable or one should have the entrepreneurship mindset amongst the students. So for that matter, the industry academia gap is to be bridged. And it is not only the talks, it is not only the pre-final or final year talks, mentorship programs, which can help. I, I understand that it is the continuous three to four year system, which starts right from the curriculum. So I'll talk about future skills in the next, I feel, question round session. Right now, it is industry readiness. So for that matter, uh, what we do at Desh Bhagat University, we have started from the curriculum design. So in the board of studies and in the curriculum design, it is the industry needs which are placed. It is our alumni who are placed in the industry that they too are there for the uh, skills in demand. It can be IT skills or it can be general cognitive skills we talk about. And out of that, then the students, they are given the live projects. They choose their own subjects under CBCS and they make it their university so that uh, they have the autonomy to think about. We give them certain platforms for thinking. Normally, as I have been listening to um, my fellow colleagues that of course, the system is so structured, or sometimes I would say overstructured, but we are very fortunate that in the new NEP 2020, the structures has, have become a little flexible. And it is we academic leaders that who have to uh, take hold of this flexibility in curricula and give those options, those uh, uh, earlier, those were uh, tight boundaries. We have to give the flexible options to the students so that they can design their own syllabi and be the future ready for the market. So uh, I understand that it is uh, the adaptability, it is the cognitive skills, they go hand in hand while they are being uh, treated for their final, you know, uh, 
uh, employability. So making students industry ready, it needs help of industry. We can see that uh, each and every student who will be there will be taken up by the industry, but it is always a combination of what is expected and what is delivered. So it is always the market forces which will work uh, towards you know, um, placements and entrepreneurship system. Uh, so it is in our hands, I would say, mentoring the students right from the beginning and taking it along three years, four years, and finally making them ready for the industry because it is the future for the students. This is my take on the industry academia gap, and it is we who have to collaboratively bridge the gap, where we have to move to the industry space, and industry has to come into the academia space to understand the needs and to focus on the students' needs. Thank you. Thank you, Sally, ma'am. It's a unique point you have been raised. We will discuss further on the our next round. So I would like to invite Professor Rajat Gupta from National Institute of Technology Silchar to share his opening remarks regarding the aspects of the student industry readiness and the future skills, what he thinks, what the initiatives should be taken. Professor Rajat Gupta ji, over to you, sir. Sir, can you put on your mic? Thank you, Abhishek. Ji, sir. Uh, good afternoon and namaskar to all of you. No Very start. outside, I express my gratitude to the organizer for inviting me to this uh, discussion. I cannot agree more with my researchers while they were talking about the skills and industry readiness. The topic selected by the organizer, I should most appreciate them. And both the things are inseparable. 21st century skill, you see that India is a vast country. If we go for the HA report or survey report of all India, that there are around 300, around four crore students, 3.85 crore students who are going for the higher education. And there are 1043 universities in the country and 65% of our population are under the age of 35. Whether this will be a dividend or disaster, this is a big question. And I am an eternal optimistic that all this 65 population 65% of the population of which are under the age of 65 uh, 35 would be a dividend only if if we follow certain things which are nicely depicted in our new education policy 2020. What really we want need is the holistic development of the student. Holistic development of the student. That is the need of the hour. Industry needs the 21st century skills. My predecessor rightly mentioned the critical thinking, communication. These are four C's learning skills, critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, communication. Four C's. Then literacy skills, information literacy, media literacy. Literacy. Then life skills, flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, social skills. So it is our responsibility to make our students equipped with all 21st century skills. So this is my opening <laughs> remark and we are sure that we will be able to do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rajasar. Thank you very much for the opening remarks. And here, Dr. Nitin Malik also joined. Hi, Nitin, sir. Very good evening, sir. Good evening. So, good evening. On your behalf, sir, I am taking the opening remarks. So, 
if you want to proceed sir you want to take the from the here we have taken the opening remarks regarding the topic from each the panelist so nitin sir if you want to take it proceed you can take it proceed from here sir okay uh, so good evening to all the esteemed panelists over here i am sorry i am sorry because there was some commitment uh, some commitments were there because of certain government meeting so i got uh, involved there and i took the excuse but uh, again i am back to the esteemed panelists over here and i think uh, it was just i could see professor rajat gupta was uh, concluding his opening remarks at this moment so right now we are here and now i'll request uh, i do not know i mean like uh, was it only the uh, professor gupta only was speaking or the no, other no. panelists have also all panelists have given the opening remarks regarding the yeah? so we are going to the second round of further discussion regarding the skills and regarding the yeah. implementation of the digital campus okay so so this is this is a very yeah. thank you thank you abhishek and thank you for I do not know the voice is a bit somebody. Actually, some... my, uh, I request everyone to put off their mic. Now, Nitin sir, please speak. Now, Nitin sir, please speak. Yeah, yeah. Can you? Uh, now, now it is okay. I. Uh, i think now now we are much better because the voice is not echoing now so uh, we come to the very important aspect uh, that is the skill education so skill education had been a very it's it's not a new word now uh, it has been there in the decades when we have been talking about the skill education and specifically carrying out more focusing of all the higher education institutes to the uh, need of the industry carrying out that whatever is required by the industry that should be carried out so how to enhance the skills how to cope up with the industry how to bring the academia at par with the requirement and making the trained workforce or rather the trained uh, brains to cope up and make the development of the society for that i'll request first uh, dr vikas singh uh, if he can throw some light on that he can make some his, of his own experience and observation that what are the requirements which is very much needed right now into the current scenario and especially i'll request all the eminent panelists because we have a very high esteemed galaxy of people over here and they are all uh, stalwarts in their area so i'll request because we have also undergone a very serious transformation that we have seen the world of pandemic and have undergone the period <coughs> where the skill is totally dependent upon uh, to carry out how we can improvise or carry out further into the in this kind of the uh, situation zones over to dr vikas please thank you thank you nitin malik ji Uh, you know, uh, during the first uh, discussion, also we have uh, discussed it a bit that uh, you know how to become industry ready, job ready, and uh, Dr. Raghuveer, you know, shared his uh, altered thoughts on the same. You know, uh, the uh, uh, you know what we are doing. I would uh, be sharing you know more on that to make uh, students industry ready. I discuss in the first you know discussion, but. you know what we are doing here uh, as very nicely pointed out by uh, dr rajat gupta ji also that what are the skills which are required you know in in future or now is the future you know in fact so what we have done you know here we have uh, taking cue from uh, uh, ugc framework and also from the new education policy which says that you know every i mentioned about the icp plan which is individual career plan in the last discussion you know here what we have done we have actually implemented cbcs in a full throttle way and when i'm saying full throttle way what we have done we have identified certain uh, you know life skill courses uh, which rajat ji was mentioning and we have made it mandatory that uh, we, there are seven schools in my university as of now that all the programs which are there every student will be required to do eight credits of life skill courses now there is a, uh, a list of seven eight courses 
out of those seven eight courses the student is free to choose two three courses of his choice depending on its three credit or two credit or four credit so eight credits are compulsory likewise eight credits are again you know compulsory from vocational uh, part and vocational when yeah. we are saying when there we are saying it's going to be bagless kind of thing bagless means you know these are absolutely skill program hands on program now uh, a student of you know architecture program can choose a program from or can it can choose a course from uh, hotel management or uh, they can choose say electrical safety program you know though they are doing architecture but uh, in electrical engineering department they are they are doing a hands on bagless theoryless no theory classes uh, entire 30 hours they are required to be in the lab only and doing a course on industrial you know this uh, industrial safety or electrical safety or such programs so what is the uh, advantage of you know bringing in these skills courses vocational courses is that every student at itm university is required to do eight credits in skill and vocational courses and eight credits in life science life skill courses and because of that you know i believe their attitude their behavior is seeing a, a big change and uh, not only their domain knowledge or not only their domain skills they are getting knowledge of other domains other disciplines and they would be more ready to take on the challenges in the real life and maybe that lifelong learning which uh, professor abir was so nicely mentioning you know this attitude of learning uh, accepting other point of view accept accepting other domain skills you know this is imbibed in them so that subsequently when they are actually working in industry they are ready to learn all those new future skills and it is compulsory like design thinking is a compulsory course across all the programs at my university they have to choose a program you know of uh, uh, ai ml big data this is not only limited to engineering or management disciplines other schools also other students also can choose these programs out of cbcs you know uh, structure and can 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 join these courses so it is very essential as rajat ji was mentioning it is very essential we have so much young population and we we must ensure as academic leaders that we have this uh, we do not have a disaster but we have a strong dividend in the years to come and this is what we are doing at it ministry in our bit to make it happen thank you so much you know malik ji for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak uh thank you sir thank you very much and you had been a very concise and straight forward to the point what is the need and uh, just taking it ahead because now you are presently at chatisgarh and uh, that is the area where the uh, industrial uh skilling and the academia needs to be on the platform uh, that is how the new state being emerged out of the madhya pradesh is into a developing uh, criteria and the, the universities and the higher education institute they have a very strong role to build up the society and build up the the youth also making them sharpening with their skills uh as you have talked about as doctor as professor vikas talked about the new education policy so uh coming on to that because with the focus on the new education policy we all know that now the emphasis is more on the skill and emphasis is also more on the uh, choice based credit system making as a basket of the courses which or the program which are being given to the students to make them to make them enrich with all a uh, kind of a knowledge which they really passion for rather than just a degrees of certificate we are more towards the skilling and very rightly said the life skill courses that is the requirement of the higher educational institute i will just go to professor raghuveer singh to uh, have his experience and have his uh, 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 arena because he he is a very senior person senior academician and a senior experience person we've been carrying out leading the universities uh, since many years so i'll request professor aguvir singh to kindly help us kindly tell us all the panelists what exactly should be the curriculum framework to be fit in the new education policy framework uh, about the skilling and industry readiness professor aguvir singh sir you will have to unmute sir you are on mute sir Oh, okay. 
actually i'm uh, you know the kind of topic which we are discussing i am of the view we should not have been discussing it if we really understood the term of you know the term called education uh we wouldn't have had anything called uh, uh, national education policy if we had followed the the term called education you when you get the term called education uh, you know in latin it it still means bringing out something from inside bring out something you know so bring out the potential of an individual it's it's nothing to do with the degrees see over a period of time degree has become the main product and the education became a offshoot or a by product whereas degree should have been a by product of education but that's so unfortunate so the skills supposed to have been built into education there is no separate component as such we call it a skill it was supposed to be part of education now when you look at education two important components if you want to say it in that way that is knowledge and skills now when you look at the, even the knowledge component in today's world knowledge has four important forms or types you know levels we call it a factual conceptual procedural and metacognitive most of we as an institutions in fact end up on the first aspect first level of education that is a factual sharing facts and what is known to everybody which is available on the public domain don't move further than so the first thing which we did as an university that we looked at ourselves hey what is that we are trying to be known for who we are why are we there in the space called education so we found those three important space in you know education for any university or a higher education institution that is knowledge dissemination knowledge creation and employability and entrepreneurship end and we found on knowledge creation and knowledge dissemination we cannot compete we do not have that where with it we can compete with government universities in knowledge dissemination they they do it at an absurdly low cost that because that requires a huge investment and a large gestation period so we you know put us into that e and d space that is employability and entrepreneurship when we looked at ourselves what are we actually doing that's our intention is good but what is the reality when we looked at our reality we said hey we aren't doing what we are supposed to be doing we are doing the way around we i put it on the continuum and found that more than 80% of our time effort and investment was going into knowledge dissemination more than 80% a very small amount of time was put on to uh, knowledge creation and employability and then we started reversing the order now when you want to reverse the order you have to relook the entire curriculum you have to redefine your approach so having done that said okay now let's find the purpose of education now the purpose is education we found that this is about a whole person it's not any one aspect of a individual so that we we had that whole person into three important acts we defined it to that his head heart and his hands and when we did that we took a holistic education as a base i said that, okay then we said okay we need certain frameworks to put that into place we said okay let's take outcome based education obe as a framework for defining what exactly we want our students at the end of the program so we had almost 150 programs we defined all program outcomes for them and more than 4000 more than 4000 Uh, courses where we define their course outcomes using bloom's taxonomy and again we put it on the continuum okay if we when we talk about bloom's taxonomy where is the time space supposed to go we said okay what again you know referring back to what i said earlier we were into more into understanding aspect here 
you know, hardly any time was spent on what, uh, you know, Professor Jamshed also spoke on critical thinking. It was no time spent on critical thinking. The faculty was delivering it, the student was noting it down. So whatever was available on public domain was repeated. Uh, that means we were doing something which we were not supposed to be doing. That's how we, in fact, we moved on that aspect. So trying to bring the education term, you know, when you go back to our old days of uh, what we call Gurukul, <clears throat> all that thing, what we are now talking was already inbuilt in the education. It was there. Okay, education was never complete without practice, but over a period of time, demand of the degree, it was so much that we forgot education. And now we talk about industry readiness. So I don't know whether we are talking about industry readiness or it is a career readiness or it is a life readiness. So we get to really re-examine these terms and what exactly each of the term mean. It's not so easy to put in. Okay, each one of us are putting our own best foot forward to try and create uh, a more employable students. Now, uh, I don't know whether you will again come back on those future life skills or should I stop here? I, you go to tell me. Ah, uh, I think we will come again, sir, or back to you. All right. Uh, Fair enough. I, I, That's I, what I was thinking. Yeah. So uh, this is really this is really the cause. Means like that is very true. What uh, Professor Raghuveer Singh added to the it that if we look into the concept or the literally meaning of the education, that how can we differentiate skill out of the education? Very rightly said, skill is part of the education. It is not only the learning that we have to carry it out, and definitely uh, not only understanding the knowledge. It is education is not limited to only understanding of the knowledge. It is the creation and innovation. That is what we always say. So once we have to create and innovate, how it will come? It will come only through imagination. Imagination with the skills which a person has. So if we are making a person educated with all the component of creativity, innovative, innovativeness and skill enhancement, that is what is required, what we feel, and everybody is prepared for the to get into the adapted adaptation towards the technology. Uh, coming ahead of it, uh, I'll request uh, Dr. Jamshed uh, because the he is a person that he will focus on what delivery apart from the course curriculum or uh, program and course outcomes which professor raghuveer said that is required to, for the specialized courses if any required for moving ahead specifically making it adaptability to, to, to the technology revolution which we are experiencing day by day dr jamshed uh thank you very much i um agree completely with uh, Dr. Malik, creativity, imagination, these are very much uh, underdeveloped and underestimated uh, talents that we have, that our students have, uh, that are not uh, given adequate opportunity to develop in a full-blown way in traditional education systems at all levels. That's changing, of course. And I, I know many of you are, are doing some of that. Uh, that leads me to a point, one point I'd like to make, which is that the future growth and dynamism of the Indian economy and the world economy, as well as the vibrancy of our democracy, as well as the quality of people's lives, is going to be, I think, determined by innovations that we that have not yet been developed. In other words, innovations that are to come. We need to prepare our youth when they succeed us uh, to have the the background knowledge, but the confidence and the skills to put new ideas out there, whether to start new companies, make new products, new ways of organizing uh, uh, people, uh, because that's where economic growth comes from. It comes from innovation, okay? So sure, 
today it's machine learning and AI, and I've published papers on neural networks. I know that field, and I also know that may be the big thing today, but in 10, 20 years, I hope there'll be other breakthroughs. So it's not enough to just learn those techniques. As has been said before, you have to students, by the time they get a bachelor's degree, have to have the confidence, the habit, and the encouragement to take risks with new ideas. Uh, new ideas, most of the breakthrough new ideas in science, in uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, in products, have not come from a single discipline. The single discipline study, while it is certainly important if you want to do advanced work for which you can go to postgraduate uh, uh, degrees, but innovations no longer come from just diving deeper into a single discipline. They come from the contact points between multiple disciplines. Uh, just think about our interaction right now. That is visual media and computer science to produce digital uh, images and digital video. Think about all the music that our young people now listen to. It's all digital. That's music coming together with computer science. The same is true of public health. Data science is going to be key uh, to, to addressing health problems. So previously, people didn't necessarily put these things together. Now, of course, we have to. In the humanities, uh, data science is, 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 is exploding. Uh, because whether you're talking about texts or you're talking about any aspect of life, there's going to be data. So I do think that the interdisciplinary, I know the term is already a bit of a cliche, but I've lived that. Uh, you know, I myself was able to combine cognitive neuroscience with music. Uh, people told me, you know, I couldn't do it and, and I've done it. And, and now it's sort of obvious the next innovations are going to come from the students. So we should not, we should stop telling our students pedantically, you know, this is what you should know and that's what you should not do. Rather, we, should, of course, we need subject knowledge. I'm not disputing that. But we also need them to have the, the horizon to be able to connect different disciplines uh, and have the confidence to spark new ideas. Uh, th thank you, Dr. Jamshed. Uh, really a great insight into it. And now uh, I'll come to Professor Shalini Gupta. Uh, you are you are uh, heading a university which is uh, really doing wonders and carrying out a new courses and uh, making a innovative starts with the number of programs. So I'll request yeah. you, ma'am, to kindly uh, tell us your experience and your insight I mean, like how how we can the, uh, make the students more responsive when we are talking about the education it is not only the one side approach of making the student to learn or understand or to sharpen his skill personality but also for the academia the teachers who are the uh, people over there so what what kind of a two-way process that is required with the present scenario to carry out the uh, more advancement or more towards the creativity and innovation which we talk. Professor Shalini Gupta. Thank you, Nitin uh, Of course, uh, it is not only the students uh, who have to work in this direction, whether we call it skilling or we talk about uh, industry readiness or we talk about innovation. It is with the faculty, it is with the uh, mentoring of the faculty that uh, everything can go further. So when we talk about faculty, of course, they need to, uh, we have worked on the, in Deshwakat University, we have worked on the skilling of faculty and um, skilling means since there has been a dramatic shift in the, uh, in the teaching learning process as well as in the assessment process, when we talk about NEP 2020, UGC different schemes or uh, whatever is up from the UGC or MHRD. So we have been organizing many, many uh, faculty development programs so that they are 
at par with the needs of the industry they are at par to teach the students at that level and uh, secondly we have worked on the mental wellness during these days and uh, the well mental wellness uh, programs they were so frequently designed for the faculty members so that they can take up uh, this pandemic issues and they can take up the mental wellness of the mentees being mentors i mean all the students so in deshbhagat university we have uh, developed two centers one is center of vocational studies and another is center of innovation and entrepreneurship so these centers are not only for the students when we talk about uh, skilling so we are working on the multiple entry exits we all talk about vocational education we are working on the um, apprenticeship we are working on uh, the where there are three parties one is students another is the uh, company and the sector skill council and the third is the university so the teachers being mentors they take the students towards skilling through vocational education programs in engineering and non engineering sectors and uh, we having around 14 schools different schools taking care of uh, uh, medical areas maybe ayurveda nursing pharmacy dental sciences paramedical sciences or physiotherapy to media it engineering management uh, beauty and wellness and all these areas i may be missing a few so we have come with uh, various short term certificate diploma advanced diploma programs where the students are guided to move towards skilling because finally it is the skill in hand it is a practical training at the same time the center of uh, value education or the center of mental wellness they take care of the needs of the students for the which are the future needs because we all talk about future skills whether it is critical thinking or it is about communication or it is about entrepreneurship going for the creativity team building and many more we can so we are trying to empower the youth to build skills and these opportunities through social innovations and social entrepreneurship and these skills these all programs are not for students many of the faculty members through their activities through these programs they Uh, develop themselves too then i talked about that there is center of innovation and entrepreneurship of course uh, there are industry mentors but i would say that the faculty also works as mentors and first of all they are given the training part in the entrepreneurship how to uh, create those um, uh, creativity or thinking um, areas or the mindset of the students so it is all about uh, you know uh, going into the change of mindset from just degree from just uh, passing from the campuses to taking the skills taking the life positively going for the happiness quotient uh, going for the positive psychology so everything is possible only if my faculty as mentors they are there in the class uh, being the role model taking care of all these aspects Uh, uh, the center of innovation and entrepreneurship has got five incubators and uh, teachers being mentors uh, college mentor or university mentors in their different disciplines for example agricultural faculty they are given training in ai as well as big data because technology or interdisciplinary uh, creativity or interdisciplinary research can happen leading to patents only if my teachers is ready for that and the students are given business plan competitions students are given various various platforms to come along with their ideas when the ideas can bloom uh, we normally give the term ideate um, innovate and incubate so under these three terms the faculty members and the faculty uh, students they work agriculture incubator is there and then uh, herbal incubator is there so i'll be very happy to share that we have come across many of the herbal products whether it's in cosmetics competing with the major uh, uh, brands in the market whether it is uh, ayurveda biscuits it can be brahmi biscuits or it can be other biscuits for the lactating mothers for the young students or young children so this is how we are coming up then the students they have come up with many of the Uh, drone projects or many of the projects which are under the patent area so we have so far come up with uh, around 20 patents which are 
published and around 10 to 12 they are in you know they are in the pipeline so all this whatever we are doing is possible with the regular skilling up skilling even uh, me as a academic leader i go through many of the courses i go through many of the programs wherein we can update ourselves because it it starts with us going over to the faculty members to the students so it is a chain this is uh, what we are doing here uh, in deshpagat university i would say that deshpagat university is at the rural in the rural area and we are here to not only transform the rural sector but we are here to transform the urban sector there are many many students from different countries and i'm very happy to share that uh, we are able to develop the students as better human beings thank you thank you uh, professor gupta uh, so uh, coming to the professor rajat gupta a man who had been always with the uh, establishing of an nit uh, working in nit where the skilling is not a new word or a new mandate to them like in a social science university or a, a liberal studies university where i am when when we hear the word skilling in the last few decades only because in an engineering institute what i feel what i personally feel skilling is is the mandate of the curriculum which has been embedded into the whatsoever branch of the engineering or whatsoever technology you are being carrying it out further so let us hear from professor rajat gupta what exactly what as an engineer or as a professor of a nit uh, what he feels about that what is the skilling requirement that is we are talking about now in in a present days in a more manner whether it is an acronym or it is really a essential component for, for for moving forward professor rajat gupta thank you dr nitin uh, i fully agree with my previous speakers to their views in continuation of my opening remark i'll just read out i'll just read out what nascom president devjani ghosh recently said uncertainty volatility ambiguity this is the only certainty that we will have the skills that you need will constantly change your ability your means your students your ability to deal with ambiguity and uncertainty is going to become your biggest competitive advantage and therefore one of the skills i have learned is to step out of my comfort zone and become comfortable with uncomfortable unquote this summarizes everything very right yeah she 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 spoke in one of the convocations to the addressing to the students multidisciplinarity holistic development interdisciplinarity this is the this is the uh, code of our national education policy 2020 yes policy is beautifully written drafted appreciated one and all but what about the implementation part we the policy i mean heading the institutions or responsible to make the policies implemented we are answerable to the 21st century generations that i strongly feel i am answerable to the 21st century generation 21st century generation wants something different now for nit system it is much easier to implement all this thing because we are autonomous academically but india is a vast country in my opening remark i said 
that there are around four crores of students going higher educational studies. And all are not that fortunate to have their academic uh, independence. In the NBA system, where I'm a general council member, there are two types of institutes, tier one and tier two. Tier one institute, no issue. But yeah, uh, implementation of the OB and other things, no issue. But is it so easy for the tier two institutes which are affiliated to universities? So there is a need for change of this, the mindset. For example, Professor Gupta, you are on mute. So you'll have to unmute, sir. You are on mute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I repeat. NIT system, we are very fortunate because we have the academic autonomy. This, the, most of the institutes of the country are not like that. Most of the affiliated to the universities, a lot of changes are there. In the NBA system also, there are two types of institutes, tier one and tier two. Tier institute is academically independent. They can implement this NEP 2020, but this is not easy for the affiliated university. Affiliated universities should come forward. Now, say for example, even for an IT, IIT system also, a student pursuing say BTEC in mechanical engineering, wants to do something in say uh, a, a program or say a minor degree in computer science. Should you allow? We must allow. We must allow. Say in the computer science, say AI, machine learning, all these things, IoT, we must develop this type of thing. So that is within our zone, within, within the department, intra-institute. A student may be interested in a civil department, he or she may be interested to do fine arts. NIT system doesn't have fine arts, but we have the nearby university where we provide the university provides the fine arts. So we should make a collaboration with the new uh, university, nearby university. So what is needed is that that collaboration and cooperation is the need of the hour. We have the habit of doing work in silos. We must come out of the silos. We must come out of the kylos, we must come out of our egos, we must come out of all these things for the betterment of the our students, and we must come out uh, of, of for uh, making the cooperation and collaboration, and we are answerable to the 21st century, and this is only possible if all the heads of the institutions come forward and make a cluster, nearby cluster, resource sharing, because for government of India, for that matter, it is impossible to provide all the resources to a particular institute. It is near impossible. So what is possible is that, that uh, human resource sharing, material resource sharing is a need of the hour. And as I said, that we are answerable to the 21st century generation students. And I am very much hopeful that yes, we can do a wonder and that what our Modi ji said is that self-reliant India, that Atmanirvar Bharat is very much possible through us only. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gupta. And uh, very rightly said that now we have the new education policy and the roadmap has to be defined. It has to be identified. No doubt that we have a lot of challenges to implement the NEP. It's not so easy. I think all of my senior panelists will agree on that, that the NEP is beautifully designed, but it has its own issues, which needs to be addressed at large to make it implementable specifically in a country like ours, where we have a diversity, we have a resource limitations and all the other things to be carried out. So now because the signals are coming from the organizer that the time is up. So I'll just request all my senior panelists and academician kindly in one sentence starting. I'll request Professor Vikas Singh to say on that one sentence and then I'll come to another focus on the future requirements, sir. How do you feel that what should be the focus on the future requirement as raised by Professor Rajat Gupta that we are accountable? We are all are accountable to our students, our society and to ourselves. So one liner, sir, from your side, a message to all. Uh, you know, I would uh, 
try to add to what Rajat Ji said so beautifully. You know, I think students should be open to learning and institutions should be open to bring down their egos, you know, as rightly said by Rajat Ji, it's time for collaboration, joining hands together, less of competition, more of collaboration. Let's make a better higher education system for the future generation of students. That's, you know, that's my uh, one sentence I would say, Nitinji. Uh, Dr. Jamshed, sir. Dr. Jamshed. Thank you, uh, Dr. Malik. Um, my sentence is this. We cannot wait to figure out how the NEP can be implemented uniformly across the country because we will lose millions of youth each year. We have to act now, and I think the only way to do it is for the government agencies to open up the sector and give universities, private ones, as well as government institutions, the license to innovate. Let a thousand flowers bloom. The solutions will come that way rather than from a committee sitting in Delhi, uh, with all due respect, sitting down and trying to give a roadmap. Uh, I'm much more in favor of the uh, let the marketplace of ideas figure that out. Very rightly said, sir. Professor <coughs> Aguvir, uh, is he with us? Professor Aguvir, sir, are you there? Okay, I'll move to Professor Shalini Gupta. Ma'am, one liner. Uh, Professor Shalini Gupta? I think there, there is some issues with the connection. Prof and Professor Rajat Gupta, finally back to you, sir. Okay, just one line. One, one liner, only because, person, uh, yeah. The only person who is educated is the one who has learned how to learn and change. Thank you. I totally agree. I totally agree with the last wording of the Professor Rajat Gupta that first we have to unlearn ourselves, then we have to make ourselves compatible and relearn and then come over there because that is what is required on our side, which I was posing to Professor Shalini Gupta also, how the faculty skilling has to be improvised. And with this, I think, Abhishek, uh, we come to the end of a very great discussion we had and uh, and we discussed on all the aspects and thanks to all the esteemed panelists over here over to you abhishek thank you nitin sir thank you for having a wonderful moderation and by this i would like to request samir to give the small token of appreciation to our speakers so this speaker certificate is presented to Dr. Nitin Malik, Registrar, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar University from Delhi. Thank you, Nitin, sir. Thank you very much. To Dr. Jamse Barucha, founding Vice Chancellor, Sai University. Thank you, Dr. Jamse, sir. Thank you very much for giving your precious time to us. A speaker certificate is presented to Professor Dr. Vikas Singh, Vice Chancellor, ITM University from Raipur. Thank you, Vikas, sir. Thank you very much for giving your precious time and always uh, enlightening us. Absolutely. Speaker certificate is presented to Professor Sanli Gupta, Vice Chancellor, Dez University, Punjab. Thank you, Sanli, man. Thank you very much for giving us time it's to us and enlightening us. Your speaker Hello. certificate is presented to Professor Raghubir Singh, Vice Chancellor, Tirantkar Mahavid University from Muradabad. Thank you. Thank you, Raghubir, sir. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. And Thank the speaker's so. certificate is presented to Professor Rajat Gupta, no, Professor Nessa Institute, Institute of Technology, Silchar, yeah. former director, yeah, and IT major of Thank you, Rajat, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for giving your precious time to us. And I would like to request all my audience, if you have any further questions, to be asked and you want you want to directly personal touch with the speakers, you can follow them on their social handles. They are pretty much active on their social handles, and you can for initiative they are doing in their campus. If you want to gain more knowledge in the higher education, the global education, what is going on, please follow our speakers on their social handles. Otherwise, you can follow our DL magazine portal and the social handles plus education at discussion if you have any questions. So by this, we will wrap up this session. And thank you, Sanli, ma'am. Thank you, Gupta, sir. Thank you, Sinsab. Thank you, Raghavir, sir.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all, all the esteemed panelists. It, it's really a great Bye -bye. to hear all of you over here. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Dr. Nitin. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Anushka.